My name is uh, Gopi Rebala. I'm a CTO of OpsMX. And my colleague, Balaji Singh, was supposed to be here, uh, but today he's not able to come. So I'll be taking care of his presentation as well. Uh, we're going to be talking about automating industry regulations enforcement. It's so mainly to see the regulations of many types, right? So we want to cover what is it that we can automate? What does what makes interesting for us to do with the Spinnaker in terms of our delivery automation? And what are the drivers for it, actually? Um, and then we'll see some examples of what are the kind of things that we can automate and how we can have it as a policies in the delivery pipelines. Um, is there a variety of regulations? These are like alphabet soup in some extent. Um, so these standards, they define not only the processes, uh, but also they're not very prescriptive in terms of what is it that you need to do. They define more in terms of the process, saying these are the checks that need to be done. But some of them are more prescriptive, like FedRAMP or PCI, but others not as much. Um, so in, if you take these, there are generally two sections within those. One would be things like thou shall have some training, onboarding process, and things like that. So uh, the tools that do those kind of things are more manual. Uh, the second part of it is in your, in your software delivery, uh, you have to have certain kinds of security built in, certain kind of approvals built in, and validations and those kind of uh, processes that we can automate. So we will look at what are the, those kind of processes and how we can automate those. What are the drivers for this automation? Um, so some of the trends that have been is this developer productivity, the focus on reducing the burden on the developer to be in the middle of the security path or knowing all the security processes. Uh, at the same time, there is also, usually in organizations, the security teams are small. And they provide some kind of a guideline saying you have to have these security checks that are done. But it's up to the teams to follow that process. And when it comes to the compliance audit, typically you find places where the, there are exceptions taken and haven't been recovered. So it becomes a friction between the security teams and the development teams. So the, as we are trying to improve the speed of the delivery, the developers are focused on new features and the delivery of the features. And the security teams are, become an impediment. And so those are some of the drivers to say, how why, how do we do this automation during the delivery process? Uh, and in the, if you have the pipelines, having those checks in the pipeline at the developer side is also a problem because now the developers need to understand what the security checks are. And if they have to explicitly create those pipelines with those checks, that becomes a problem. Right? <clears throat> to some extent, policy as a code, if you can define these policies, have some in repository that get executed at different stages in the background, providing alerts to the developers saying these are the failures or at the deployment time as a uh, admission control in the target environment, then uh, you can get a better uh, re response to the security requirements in the organization. So uh, these drivers having the security integrated into the delivery process uh, really needs a, an integrated approach for the uh, DevSecOps okay. delivery. And so what is the complexity here? And if you look at the delivery process, it's typically not just one pipeline that goes all the way from uh, code check-in to the production environments. Uh, in regulatory environments, they have production environments that are independent or separated out with limited access. And also the approvals that happen in the production environments uh, does not allow the same pipeline to go all the way through. Uh, so having in, in checks in the pipeline, in one pipeline, is not possible. So you have to have these verification of the policies done, for example, uh, the static code analysis with the uh, code, and then vulnerability checks at the time of the deploy, making sure there are no critical or high in them. Or if there is a process requirements like Sarbanes-Oxley, checking at the time of the deployment 
that becomes fairly complex uh, if you have all these disconnected pipelines and you're trying to do it uh, through uh, connected stuff, right? So, so these are the main things that make it difficult to do the complete automation for the security. Uh, and doing this at scale becomes even harder. So what, what, what do we go, how do we do it with Spinnaker? Right? Um, so Spinnaker provides some features in terms of security. Uh, it has uh, RBAC built into these applications. You can have triggers, uh, who can trigger a certain pipelines. You have service accounts configured. You can also, as a process, lock the pipelines from the UI and can have them only change through Git or automated process through Git. Uh, you can have cluster locking, so no changes to the target environments can be done from the UI. Um, and then the, you get significant audit information from uh, Spinnaker, so you, you know when a pipeline is triggered, when the pipeline completes, who triggered it. All of these notifications can be uh, captured, and you can have a dashboard for those. Uh, but that's not sufficient in most of the systems. Right? If you look at Spinnaker itself, uh, you, you can divide the security on top of what you deploy in the production environments to be uh, as a infrastructure security, operational, and the delivery security. Uh, typically what we see is enhancements to uh, Spinnaker core itself on how we deploy Spinnaker and how we operate Spinnaker, how we manage the pipelines, uh, secrets management, those uh, fall into one bucket, and then the delivery security in terms of what are your pipelines, how, how are you integrating in your application delivery, the security requirements for those applications, those fall into the uh, uh, delivery, secure, delivery security pipeline. So we'll focus more, more on the delivery security for the application delivery itself. Right. Uh, so here, you, you, there usually we also have extensions in the pipeline, right? Custom integration. So let's say uh, in an enterprise you're using check marks or a sneak. Um, you want those checks to be part of the delivery. That means you need extensions to be built into the Spinnaker uh, to verify those. Um, uh, from the security perspective, you can see the security team is trying to protect the application from various types of attacks. Right? It's, it's a a security perspective, not a application developer perspective. So if you look at those, uh, you know, they're looking at the OSS security. What are the uh, libraries from the OSS that we are including into the, in the software? What code are we forking and using in our code? Uh, what are the vulnerabilities that could be uh, exposed because of the code that's being done? And if you're building, and uh, are we building it in the uh, right server. You don't want the developers building on their uh, test systems and then use that code to promote to the production because you, you want to be ensure the compiler and the libraries that are being included are all verified and vetted. Um, <coughs> and the artifact uh, repository also, you want to make sure you, you pick it up from the right locations. You don't want that artifacts to be presented in a location where it's not approved by the central team, right? At the same time, the deployment, who can deploy? Uh, what are the processes? You don't want direct access to the target clusters. What are the uh, processes, automated processes that we are using to deploy to those environments? And when you're running it, you know, load balancers, security groups, what are the possible ways in which it can be attacked? So from the security perspective, these are all the things that they are trying to uh, identify and enforce the threat vectors and uh, enforce the compliance. So these are not exposed. So what that translates to, you know, from an application development and delivery perspective, is all the checks that we need to do. Right? It's a SAST, SAST analysis, static code analysis, image scanning. Uh, when a binary is built, uh, you want to make sure uh, the image is scanned and for any of the libraries that are included in it come from the right location and known vulnerabilities don't exist for them. Uh, you also want to make sure the 
git branch you know, policies are set. Uh, this allows the uh, ensuring that you know the changes that are going into the main branch are vetted, and you also go through some unit testing or other analysis before it gets into there. You know, and then at the same time, you can also ensure that licensing for the open source. That's also one of the uh, common themes that comes up. And, and once the binary is built in the testing, you have other processes that you have to go through. Uh, so dynamic analysis, and uh, if you have a specific process requirement in an organization, some of them could be using Jira or ServiceNow and ensure the process goes through that for the approvals. Uh, so you want to have that integrated in your automated process. And in the staging, similarly, you have uh, additional checks like the Sarbanes-Oxley, uh, where you need two different individuals to approve to go to the production. Uh, and this is just a guideline. Um, and there are some exceptions. Typically, you take exceptions. Right? You know, when you build the system, when you're moving to the production, you know there are some vulnerabilities or process exceptions. Maybe you have to push the hot fix immediately. You have to take those exceptions, but you need to be able to record those exceptions and then uh, fix them as soon as possible. Um, in the production, again, you want to make sure the blast radius when you're deploying is small. So you need to ensure that you have some kind of a uh, deployment structure where you can recover from errors very quickly. Uh, you want to be able to verify the infrastructure uh, vulnerability checks, right? And so ingress, egress for the load balancers and the uh, prominence checks on the images that are being deployed went through the checks. So, if, so given that all of these things that need to happen, today the organizations, the way they do it is uh, some of these checks get built into the pipeline, but some of these are done outside the pipeline. For example, if you uh, have an image deployed in production and a vulnerability is found for it, it, it there's no uh, way to track that that's been remediated uh, immediately. Usually they look at, say, uh, Docker registry and say, for this Docker registry, when a scan runs on it, or these images have vulnerability. So if a developer pushes a new image into it, but not necessarily deployed in the target environment, you may not know. So these kind of uh, exceptions do happen because of the way today the systems are built and who checks the security things. And so one of the things that we recommend is the integrating the security checks in the pipeline. Uh, it does, uh, and use these prominence checks as admission control during the deployment time. Right? So if you have process requirements like Jira or a service now, those need to be part of your delivery pipeline. And one of the key things that uh, you have to ensure is Spinnaker, we can do extensions, plugins. You have to make sure that these extensions themselves are secure. Uh, they come from the right locations, and if you're or making them dynamic, that's even more critical that the locations are properly set and the versions are controlled. Uh, admission control is a critical piece. So when we are doing the admission control, there you have to, for us to check whether the image has gone through the proper uh, process and exception approval structure, you need to have some place that it can go and check. So that's where you need a database where you can verify the provenance of the image that is coming through and check that. So that's one of the things that we will talk a little bit more after this one. Uh, and it's, it's not sufficient that you are compliant, but you need to be able to prove that you are compliant. That's typically one of the critical requirements. And so you need to make sure everything that's happening is auditable and have a database where you can present the data. And, and alert, alerts on the policy checks. So here, the multiple groups are involved. That's one of the key problems, right? Because there is a security group involved, the, the DevOps groups that are involved, and uh, the actions taken by different groups depend on what kind of alert that comes in, and everyone needs to be aware that there is an action that needs to be taken. So that's where the uh, 
alerting and ability to share these alerts is critical. So one of the things that we talked about is we need to be able to check the provenance at the end, which means, so in a Spinnaker, when you run the pipeline, there is a pipeline execution data. Even if you have multiple pipelines, you have execution data across these. Now the trick becomes how do you correlate the information across these and have a policy that can run on the pipeline. For example, if you are deploying in a production system from uh, artifactory to a Kubernetes environment. So how do we ensure that the artifact that is in the artifact to the container was built uh, on a certain date by a certain commit? So that correlation information is one of the pieces that are missing. So what we need to do is have some kind of a correlation database uh, built. So this is something that we built. So there is a database, then you can expose the data at, at the deployment time as an admission control. If we want to check uh, a provenance of the image, is it built by a uh, certain build system uh, within the last two days? So we should be able to check those kind of things. Right? So that's way, the, then we can have these policies that can apply to the data that we are delivering through the pipelines, and that can be integrated in the Spinnaker pipeline to check at any given time. So when we talk about the policies, what we are talking about is simple things like these, right? is check for Sorbonne-Soxley compliance in a pipeline. So if you're deploying to production environment, can we check if it's been approved by more than one person? Um, are the vulnerabilities, are there any critical or high before we deploy? Or uh, are any changes to the pipelines happen and are they only from authorized users? So some of the pipelines we can lock them up um, and, but someone can go change it in the gate and that gets applied to the spinnaker, let's say. So those changes that are going into the gate, can we verify that's from the approved group? Um, uh, so th these are all the s s uh, simple enough checks, but they can all be uh, critical for having a compliance and be part of the spinnaker. And some of these checks, uh, you want them to be part as a hidden pieces in spinnaker, like a plugins that automatically checks. And some of them are the process checks that are individual stages in spinnaker. Uh, so we look at uh, one of both the examples on uh, how we can use those. Let's see here. So what you're seeing here is some examples of the policy pipelines. Um, uh, these are uh, set to just check for the policies and not more. Uh, so in, in this, see here. So what, the way these systems are set up is uh, there is a OPS server running in the backend, uh, and there are some policies that are applied to it. We are getting the data to the OPS server both to the, through the pipeline execution context and also in some cases backend database. Uh, so in, in this one is simple Sorbonne-Soxley check. Let's say it's uh, being triggered by somebody and then the manual judgment is done by somebody else. So uh, you can look at the policy as a simple thing here based on the pipeline execution context. Um, this one is a similar one. So here you have the manual judgment done by one person, but the trigger is done by somebody else. Right. Uh, so you can have simple policies based on pipeline context, and in some cases you can have uh, <coughs> uh, built-in structures where you say, 
in the process, you require a automatic verification done in the deployment. And if we try to remove that and then uh, go to uh, the uh, production environment, it should not allow you to make this policy uh, or process change in the pipeline. So these are more like a plugins that are built into Front 50, uh, built into Cloud Driver that allow you to do the checks automatically. So the advantage here is that the security group can define these policies and have them as a policy or code and uh, deployed in the backend server. And as the developers start using their dev test cycles and then when they promote to production, it automatically checks and verifies that the process has been followed or not and then stops them from going forward. So the advantage here is that the policy as code is available. If the developers need to see what is the policy that is failing, they will be able to see the policy. Uh, and at the same time, it doesn't stop them from doing their dev test cycles uh, and have those pipelines as self-service for them until they start promoting to the production. So that was a, a quick demo. Uh, the process where we are going, getting the data from database for vulnerability checks or the provenance checks uh, is not included in this one, but we can uh, show those demos. That's outside the Spinnaker, so we can show those demos in the booth. Any questions? That's all I wanted to share for today. Any questions or uh, I'm sorry? Yeah. Oh. Testing. Oh, wow. So how do you uh, load the regos or your policies in the, in the demos what you're demonstrating? So we, we have a uh, GitOps model set up. Uh, so the Spinnaker, uh, we have the connection with the Git. So anytime they change the policy applied into the Git that gets applied into the OPA server that's running in the Spinnaker environment. So this is happening outside of Spinnaker? This, the, yeah, those policies are applied. And you have a plugin or whatever that connects Spinnaker to OPA? So those policies also, uh, we are applying through the Spinnaker pipeline, actually. Oh. So you have the rego policies in the Git. Uh, there is one admin pipeline with the Spinnaker. Uh, whenever changes happen in that Rego system, uh, sorry, in the Git for the Rego files, it applies into those. Uh, into the config. Okay, makes sense. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.